Hey, hey, happy day. I want to talk about Canada, mostly at least, and all of you people, no matter where you're tuning in from anywhere in the world, you should also pay attention. Don't tune out because I kind of think this applies to you too. It applies to everybody in the world, right? Let's talk about a doctor. I, I have a doctor. This is fictional, but I'm making it up as I go along. I have a doctor and he has a an assistant, a secretary. I've never met her, and for the last three years, I talked to her on the phone and I hate her. And she hates me. We fight on the telephone all of the time. We send emails back and forth, and I tell her in the emails, I hate you. One day, I went into the office and she was there and I met her. Guess what? She was black. So I went from being a hater to a racist. She went from hating me to telling everybody that she knew that I was a racist. It was bad. All of a sudden, everything was upside down because I'm white. <gasps> I've been white a long time. She's black. She's been black a long time. But I don't know. The dynamics changed then, right? In this fictional story, the dynamics changed because all of a sudden, I went from being an unhappy customer to a racist. And, and a whole bunch of stuff comes along with that wordage, right? I mean, that's not very nice. I, I don't know. And, and now, still in Canada, the headlines just the other day were this. Most of the new appointees to the Order of Canada in 2020 were white men, despite some progress made in boosting the diversity of the elite group. Well, firstly, they're elite. Of course they are, because you have to do special things to get the Order of Canada. You just do. Out of the 175 people who were picked for this prestigious civilian honor in 2020, a third of them, only a third, were women, and only 7.4% were members of visible minorities. Oh, what was us? Maybe that means that they didn't do anything spectacular. Maybe it also means that they only represent about 3 or 4% of the overall population. It would appear to me, at least, that they've doubled up and they're doing great. People of minority groups, right? They're doing a fantastic service to their country. New country, maybe. And, and why are you mocking that? Why is that being marked? Only 7.4%. Wow, does it matter? What, what is this color thing all of the time? You should be judged on what you do. Uh, not, not what you look like. I mean, good bloody grief. I look like the janitor. People are always handing me brooms. The Toronto Star, you know what? They're racist. Most people in Canada, particularly in government or media positions, are racist. They don't like white people, right? The Toronto Star, though, they hired a racist, and there's no pushback or anything like that. Nothing happening. And true, I don't know her last name. I can't ever pronounce it. She's a race and gender columnist for the Toronto Star, and I spoke of her just the other day. And it's had time to percolate in my little mind. And I was thinking, you know what? She hates white people. She basically says that a lot. One of the things that she's written is that white uh, supremacy and, of course, you know, white privilege and white people, they're the only group that can spin a fake grievance into violent chaos and not face bodily harm. She was referring to the incident in Washington here recently. You know what? I hate, personally now, I hate racists. I really do. White people um, have limits of job applications and so much more, and special interest groups are always standing up. It's like the Joe Biden thing, and he says, hey, I'm, elect me, nominate me, and I'm going to have a black woman. What? What about having somebody who's best to be vice president of the country? Instead, you eliminated a huge percentage of the population in terms of application, right? And, and because you're going at it the wrong way, and this is what this woman's talking about, the columnist, the Toronto Star's columnist is racist. The Canadian government is racist. It's really okay to be white. Color shouldn't matter. All you white folk, hey, Ignore these goofs. I mean, no matter where you go, every commercial, there's no white people anymore. Every commercial on television, there's black people and different colored minority groups. Why is that? I have friends who are <clears throat> part of those groups and, and they too can't understand it. They say, what's wrong with you white folk? I mean, how is this happening? Why is everybody judged like this? They're trying to get rid of you. And I said, I know. You can be in a room with 10 people, nine of them are black and one little white guy, and, and he's still a racist. And boy, oh boy. In 2020, this columnist at the Toronto Star, maybe she should deal with this. In 2020, the NBA, National Basketball Association, showed that 93.6% of all the players were black. Ah! Isn't that awful? That's terrible. Oh, they're better players than white people. Doesn't matter. Get rid of them. You gotta bring it down. You gotta bring in more white people because 85% of the country's white. It's craziness. They have 93.6% for a reason. They're good players. Duh. It's kind of simple stuff. That's what you want. If it goes to 100%, who cares? As long as they're good players. And then you have the NFL, National Football League. 70% of all the players there are black. That's because they're good players. 
but 9% of the league office managers are black. So of course, these people like this Toronto Star person, people like her, they're saying, that's not fair, there's only 9%, that's bad, but, 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 but there's 70% of the players are black. I mean, they just keep on being themselves. Let's leave that alone for a minute, I guess, but color shouldn't matter. Let's be colorblind. We all are, except these crazy people who are always trying to entice hate, and it makes me crazy. Should not be limitations on anybody because of their color. If you go into a room and there's nine white people and one black person, or nine black people and one white person, if you feel uncomfortable, you don't like it, leave the room. Simple stuff. Jumping now, keeping up the many headlines. Deadly violence in Washington, D.C., and lawmakers to impeach. Seattle, Portland, I don't recall any similar action to that. You know, the mayors or the governors. Oh, oh yeah, oh, they were Democrats. Got it. Then in Canada, a little bit of U.S. there, now back to Canada. <laughs> I've talked about this before. It's in every country, particularly in the U.S. and Canada. You have all your elected people who are saying, y'all got to stay home, there's a stay-at-home order because you guys are too stupid to assess your own risk but we're not going to abide by the rules that we put in place. So it's kind of old news now, but, but this is, you know, interesting to me. There's a senator in Canada, he co-signed an order barring international travel during the pandemic, pandemic, and then he went to Mexico. <laughs> I signed it, y'all gotta stay home, and then I'm going to Mexico, right? Conservative, yeah, right, but it barely is. Senator Platt, he traveled to Mexico on December 28th. He got there, and then he had a reflection, some great, thing, I guess, on his decision to travel. So he turned around and went back to Canada. That would be on December 31st, some holiday. That's only a couple of days, right? I mean, what brought that on? Somebody voted him and said, hey, you idiot, what are you doing? And then you have conservative MP David Sweet in Canada as well. These conservatives, they're all the same. They're all a bunch of whacks. There's a huge swamp in Canada with the political base. Anyway, Sweet, he's now resigned because he was chairman of the House of Commons Ethics Committee. <laughs> The ethics committee. He's a pretty ethical guy, and he said, "Hey, y'all, gotta stay home, but not me. I'm special." Last today, still talking about Canada. You have a company based in Ottawa called Shop Shop If He's, you know, and they've said Trump all of his stores uh, would kick them off because we don't like how he operates. Well, firstly, you're guilty till proven innocent. Hey, I get that. That's a Canadian communist way. Uh, I get it. But what about all the people? How dare you people do that? What about all the people that work for Trump? Thousands of people do, you know, it's a huge, huge company. Like, you know, billions of dollars worth of assets. And this is an independent thing. I mean, Trump himself doesn't go in and, and take orders for baseball caps and mail them to you and stuff like that. Blah, blah. Hey, y'all, come back here tomorrow. We're gonna more for you from the right, right? See ya. <laughs>